Gut. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I want to do that thing today where I kind of talk to you and catch up and also set some intentions I guess for the rest of the video. Um, I kind of decided probably <laughs> to just make one long video for the whole month of December, a bit like the Halloween special I guess but over a bigger period of time and kind of less consecutive filming. Um, things have gotten a little bit intense behind the scenes and naturally I'm not super coping. Um, they should start to calm down after next week, hopefully then things can be like a bit more Christmassy I guess, but at the moment I'm kind of fighting for my life a bit. Um, try and catch my breath because I'm so stressed. <laughs> um, we came back from Wales on Tuesday and it was okay, it was nice, it was really good to see my family and to spend time with them, um, but I didn't film as much as I had hoped. Um, for whatever reason, Wednesday didn't really cope this time. When we went a couple of years ago, she was fine. Uh, this time, not so much. <laughs> she was a bit too too worked up, too stressed, too overwhelmed, um, and she didn't really like settle or relax at all. So it was a bit intense. Um, we're back now, and yesterday I had a haircut, <laughs> um, a scheduled haircut, and then today now I'm trying to like catch up and like reorganize my life, I guess. Um, yeah, it's not been very exciting. I haven't been filming a lot, but it's been very boring. It's things like doctor's appointments, vet appointments, a lot of running of errands and trying to organise stuff for the end of the month. Um, I now have a hospital appointment two days after Christmas, which is fantastic. <laughs> fantastic work. Um, so that's kind of the vibe. It's just gotten a bit messy. Um, the Christmas stickers, they're not Christmas stickers this year, they're winter stickers. Um, I made them more general. They finally arrived uh, yesterday, I think, or the day before. My neighbour took them in while we were away. And they're super cute, but now it's like, I think it's the 14th of December today, which makes tomorrow the last day for posting. It's final post day tomorrow in the UK. Um, obviously I could still post them out, but it means they're not guaranteed in time for Christmas, which is kind of annoying, I guess. Um, but as I say, things got a bit mixed up. Like, I ordered them with plenty of time, I think, and then things just got, you know. Um, so I'm not sure whether to list them now and try and ship some tomorrow somehow, or whether to wait, I guess. What I'll have to do is, after I record this, <laughs> is post um, on Patreon and get their guidance, see what they want me to do. Um, but because they're generally winter-themed, I think, apart from some of the ones on this sheet, they could just be posted in January and it would still be cute for like January, February, I think. So should be okay. 
Um, apart from that, I just kind of want to talk about some notebook stuff, I guess. Um, I don't really want to talk about my life because it's gotten so... Ugh. Um, I have got some covers. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> After I posted the previous video, I guess, and I said that the Hobonichi cover was still too tight and I was kind of sad about it, I left it on for a couple of weeks and it didn't stretch out a lot. It's probably not enough time, I know that. But my books were getting so bent, it was stressing me out, okay? <laughs> it was worrying me. Um, so I picked up a Motem cover, and I know it's Motem and not Mortem this time because I have the dust bag for reference. So it's Motem, I guess. Um, I ordered one in the end because even after I said I didn't really want one, everyone kept recommending them still. So I was like, I need to know what the deal is. <laughs> um, would kind of like to know why people are so obsessed with them. So I ordered one. I got it really cheap actually because I think it was my first time ever like shopping on AliExpress. So they gave me like a first time buying like 50% off or something. I only paid £30 for it. Um, and the shipping was free. So I'm not sure how I swung that. <laughs> um, but for £30, I'm pretty happy. Um, I don't know if I would want to pay the full price for them. It's like £70, £78 or something would be the full price, something like that. And like aesthetic wise, because this is not really the like aesthetic that I wanted, I don't know if I would pay that for it. Not because I think the quality is bad, but just because this is not really the vibe that I had wanted to go for. Um, but it came actually, it was here when we got back, <laughs> it was like stuck out of the letterbox. Um, so shout out to everyone in my neighbourhood for not stealing it while I was gone. Um, and it's, it's nice actually, my book is still a bit bent, I think that is just kind of how it is. Um, I think it's because the book itself is warping a bit where it's full, so it's kind of fine. Um, they do fit a lot better though, there is a lot more room for them, I will say that. It definitely doesn't feel as tight as in my Hobonichi cover, and this is the A6 plus size, just to clarify. Um, it has the button closure and it has two buttons, so obviously you can use the small one, the one on the like outside, <laughs> or you can, when it gets fuller, you could use the one on the inside and it would give it more, more width, I guess has the pen loop on the back which is nice um, and then it has pockets which is pretty cool a lot of people talked about not liking these covers because they don't lie flat which I think is true <laughs> um, it's because of the back pocket I don't know how you call this, the big back pocket I literally don't know what that's for I'm not sure what I would ever really use that for it's just too big um, I don't know, I don't, I don't really think it needs to be there to be honest but <clears throat> it is there um, how can I be losing my voice already? Literally ridiculous. Anyway, I think I like it. I think it's fine. Um, it has more pockets on the back. It's a good fit. I have no complaints. It has these two bookmarks. Um, I don't know, this is probably a really anticlimactic review, but the, the kind of like review is that like it works and it's fine. It keeps my book safe. I got it in black this time um, and I think I think it's good. Um, as another option, I ordered two because I was in kind of a panic about it and I wasn't sure what to do. I had ordered this one first and then when I saw that I could get this one for like only £30, I thought it would be worth a try because that way if this one didn't work out, I would have this one, that kind of thing. Um, this one I ordered from Keely from Traveller's Times on Etsy. That's the same shop that I bought the cover for my Hobonichi Weeks from, if you remember that. Um... Yeah, so I hadn't opened this one yet because I opened this one and put it on and I thought it was fine enough and then I was just busy again. So it's not that I deliberately snubbed this one, um, I just, things have just been so, you know. Um, so I ordered this one in black this time as well. Such a thank you card. Um, and it is basically the same thing, it's just less, I guess, it's just less less full, less big. Um, I think from what I understand, this one is the A6 cover that Keely makes um, for all A6 books, but we were looking at the measurements together and I think it's like two centimeters or something bigger than the Hobonichi ones. So I think it might still be a better fit than the Hobonichi cover, but again, this is not the aesthetic that I had ideally wanted for my books. Um, it's very, it's obviously leather, so it, it smells like leather, and it's very textured inside, and I don't, I don't want that, I didn't really want that. Um, that's kind of what I meant when I was talking in the previous video about not really wanting to order one from Etsy. 
um I'll try my books and see if they fit but I think I'll stick with this one for now just because this one stinks right now <laughs> it kind of needs airing out um and this one is kind of satisfying at the moment I think it has kind of a nice feel to it um so I'll take these out put it over there for now um, I also covered my books, I haven't talked about that. See, there's so much weird stuff to catch you up on and I just feel like this is going to be a bit all over the place, but bear with me. Um, we'll try this first and then I'll talk to you about how I covered my books because I finally bit the bullet and did that. Um, I was not willing to face moving into the yellow Avec book for January <laughs> until I had a solution. Um, and I'll talk you through it in a second. Um, so the only thing I feel is that like the leather might need training a bit, you know, because this is quite like a, not a sharp point, but for two books it would be. So I'm not 100% on how they're going to go in. There is quite a lot of room on the top and the bottom, so they might be a bit slidey, not sure. Um, but they fit. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit excess on this side, obviously, it's a bit... I don't know how to describe it. It works, do you know what I mean? Like it works fine. And this is kind of what I was expecting from it is that it would look like this. Um, it's just because when it's folded for posting, it gets so, mm, I don't know how you call it, but it just needs a bit of a bit of time, I guess, with books in it to get, become like a, a softer shape. And obviously with leather, it would wear over time and it would like soften up and stuff. So there we go, there's another option. Um, I don't think I like it as much as I like the Motown cover, which is surprising for me, I guess. Um, again, I got a pen loop and again, it's absolutely like fine. I just, I actually think I prefer this one. And I know I said in the last video that I wasn't interested in Motown and I didn't understand, but maybe I do understand, you know, because I think, I don't know. I just think it's the feel of it. It's quite spongy, which is quite nice. It's like, it's soft. And I kind of like that, I guess. Um, I also like that this one has a lot more pocket options. This is why after I had ordered the one from Keeley and then I saw this one, I then thought like, oh, I might order this one too. Because the reason I had bought a Hobonichi one originally and not gone for one from Etsy was because I wanted the pockets. I want to be able to store little bits in here. <laughs> um, and obviously I can't do that with the one I bought from Traveler's Times. It doesn't have pockets on the inside because it's just a very basic leather cover. Um, again, I could do without this at the back. It's not the best, it's not ideal, um, but I do like the interior and stuff, the layout otherwise, so I think I'll stick with this one for now. Also, because it feels almost padded, it's soft, it feels like it would protect my books that bit much more. Um, I don't know if it really would or if I just... I don't know. I think this is the one I prefer for now. So I'll put these back in here in a second. Um, uh, thanks to everyone, I guess, who kept recommending Motum. I guess I'm a convert. Um, you got me. <laughs> I'm officially joining the cult. Um, okay, so when I covered my books, how do I talk about this? Um, my materials, I guess, first of all. What I did was buy... I'm trying to think if I have the paper on my desk still. I don't know where it is. What I did was buy a, an A4 pad of, like, black craft paper, like, children's craft paper. In the UK, we call it sugar paper. That's the texture. I don't know what you call that elsewhere. It's the, the, the colourful crafting paper you can give to kids and it has like a, a soft recycled texture, if that makes any sense. Um, I bought a pad of that and then what I did was just fold, fold it around the book. <laughs> um, um, let me see if I can find, hang on. Okay, we got lucky because the side of my desk right now is chaos because of all the traveling and i'm so confused about it this is what i did this used to be an a4 sheet of paper um if you can imagine it bigger do i have an a4 sheet no okay we'll have to use our imagination <laughs> you have to imagine this is an a4 sheet like this what i did was um line my book up with the top top left of the paper like the top and the side and then you have to imagine there was all the extra material down here and then I used a pencil to draw a line down the edge of the book and along here and then I added like two or four centimeters onto the side with a ruler and then I used a craft knife and a ruler to cut the shape out um this way you get this without the folds you just get this long piece of paper 
and then all I did was put like the book on one side and kind of like measure out like how much I wanted for the flap um this was my first test so it's a bit short but I measured out approximately on either side how much I needed for the fold and then I held it carefully <laughs> I used my phone I think as a paperweight to hold one side while I folded the other I folded it really carefully that's the black that's the black like line you can see is the fold and then I did the other side and then uh, I just closed the book basically after you fold one side like this you should close the book and then like do the other side um that makes it neater and then you don't have to do this fold yourself the book will do that for you so that's kind of how I did it it was super easy that way there's no excess paper on the bottoms and the top to fold it's just the edges and so long as you cut the shape carefully it should fit obviously um super super simple and that's what I wanted it didn't take me very long to work out I thought it would take longer but it didn't um I'm very relieved to have solved it so easily and then I put on what are these the Midori A6 clear covers that's what they are um it's the same one I had for my cousin but the A6 size and it fits over the books with the paper perfectly I was so nervous I only ordered two for each book to see if it would fit and then when I realized it fit I bought three more for my next year books that way when the books are finished I can archive them on the shelf in the paper and the plastic and they're protected um these come with a little pen loop that I haven't folded out but they literally fit like snugly so if I, I don't want to take it off because it was a faff to get on but none of this is glued either like the paper cover is not glued on it's just folded over the book and then the plastic keeps it in place if that makes sense um so super super easy it just looks like this <laughs> um and then yeah folded and kept in place so very quick fix very happy with it I will keep doing this <laughs> um this is my day free and I just put a spooky little kid on there because I always do. And then for my Avec book, this is the archive label that I've talked about before that is available on my Patreon. Um, I just filled it out with an archive label um, with the details so that it's ready to archive at the end of the month. Um, that's it really, very easy. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. If you have any questions, I can try and clarify in the comments, but it is just very, very easy. Um, this is what it looks like. It's super super simple if you have any kind of craft skill at all you should be able to do it um and i have very little craft skill but i managed it so um not a lot going on in here because i took them with me when i traveled but i didn't do anything i was too busy too stressed too much going on um i'm a bit behind where would you have seen um working on pages for everyday gloom again and then got my nails done <laughs> a vet trip this is the day that I covered my books, so I documented that. Um, I don't know why this is empty. <laughs> I think I was trying to rest because this is the day we traveled, so I think I probably slept for most of this day, if I'm being honest. Um, it didn't really help in the end, but there we go. And then these are two of the days I was in Wales. This is the day maybe that we came back. I just need to print some photos and finish filling it out. That's today. So I'm not too far behind, it's mostly just that I'm waiting to print some bits and then I can catch it up properly. But otherwise things are going well and we're almost there. I was also waiting for my stickers so I could decorate a bit. Um, because I really like that in October I've got all the little stickers throughout for the month. So I wanted to try and bring some of that into December before it gets too full. So there's not a lot going on. Um, I am behind in my sleep log, I don't think I've actually set it up for December just yet, I've just been busy yeah the 3rd of December so I'll spend some time trying to fix that up as well sometimes I keep notes on my phone if I'm not actively filling it out in the book so I do have some information to fall back on if I need it um and then in this one I'm not sure where I would have last shown you up to it's when I was in Bristol uh an article of some kind might have already talked about that that was last week I think and then my sketchbook again Oh no, this is last week, which is filled out. And then I have an article called Dream Machine, I think, which is from New Scientist. Um, it's a good number of pages long. I did that awful thing again where I thought it didn't look that long and then I was writing it and I was like, oh good god, what have I like started? Like, what have I done? Because it was like 12 pages or something silly. It was a lot. Um, and then again, I just have that little photo of my books covered to stick in and write about. Um, and then again, I'll probably stick some photos from Wales too and some stickers. Um, 
so a little behind but not really I guess just need to spend like a good day or a good afternoon catching up a bit we'll try and film that I don't think I'm gonna do it today I think my dad and I have plans to clean um we were only away for four days but you know when you're in such a rush leaving that everything is just a mess and then you come back and you're already busy and then everything is just more of a mess um so I think this afternoon we're just kind of cleaning and sorting stuff out a bit tomorrow we're running some errands and then maybe I could come back and film depending what time it is um but I'm not I'm not 100% <laughs> um I'm in London this weekend wasn't supposed to have to but now I am which is fine uh we'll see Luke that would be cool we might try and film some bits in central I guess with the lights um and then after that then like next week things should be like slightly calmer so I'll try and film some more bits some more dedicated bits then but that's kind of where I'm at that's what's going on that's why I disappeared because <laughs> I can't remember if I actually announced that I was only making one video or not I think I just vanished by accident but that's the situation I'll probably make another audio segment maybe for the end of the month um but there we go hope you guys are having a slightly less chaotic December so far um or at least that it's wrapping up <laughs> by the time you're watching um hopefully hopefully things are gonna calm down soon It's now Thursday the 21st of December um, and I lost some days. We went to London and came back and it was fine, it was good, it was only like a 24 hour visit, it was super fast. Um, but Luke and I spent some time walking around like the South Bank area for a long time which is our favourite thing to do um, and that was really nice. I got my nails done yesterday, <laughs> um, they're a lot less than normal, they're shorter <laughs> and they're more minimal because when we came back from London I actually shut this finger in the car door and I broke the nail quite short um, and they repaired it okay like it was no problem <laughs> um, but it was painful <laughs> and I feel like I'm a bit cursed because I always seem to break my nails around Christmas I last year I think I broke it on New Year's I got it stuck like in the the carpet of the stairs while hoovering um, and that was really painful and it just feels so cursed <laughs> to start the new year with a broken nail a really ugly broken nail so I went short and cute in the hopes that they'll survive um I have been kind of experimenting in this the last couple of days like while resting it's that thing again where when I think I'm overwhelmed and stressed I start looking for like a creative planner <laughs> way to problem solve things um I've been talking to some people on tumblr and stuff and they've been saying things like when they hyperfixate it's normally because there are things they can't control or problems they can't solve in their life and so they look for other ways to do that that kind of thing and i think it's the same for me <laughs> um i think that's why i had such like a turbulent summer um obviously i had quite a lot going on with my health and stuff and i think problem solving planners <laughs> is almost a way to cope with that um even if i can't resolve health problems or symptoms i can pick up a new system and i can chip away at it until it like works and then it works and I'm happy and I feel really good and then something else will become stressful and then I'll start thinking of a new way to solve a new problem if that makes sense um but here's the thing I've been feeling really bad about it <laughs> um I've been feeling like weird and kind of conflicted and like sad at two in the morning about it and then I realized that so long as I maintain my memory book the a6 of Eck, that half 
it doesn't really matter if I want to fool around in this. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if this is like my side thing, so long as I'm loyal to this one book, right? Like that's kind of my thinking. This one is my memory book, it's like my archive. This one is my commonplace book, for like very simple terms. So if I maintain this one and I put this, this one <laughs> on a temporary hold, a little pause if you will, just for a little bit, it doesn't really matter <laughs> um, because this book will still be there when I'm ready to come back to it and in the meantime I won't lose anything like I did in the summer because it will all be in here um, so that's kind of my thinking <laughs> I don't really I don't really care I guess like I just think it's fine I just don't think it's a big deal um, the nice thing too is that because of my Philofax experiments in July it was a lot quicker this time for me to problem solve some stuff and then it was also really easy to just pick back up, nothing needed buying, it was all just in a drawer waiting. Um, so it hasn't cost me anything. <laughs> I think I'm gonna lose my voice. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't feel too bad, I feel okay about it. I'm just like, if this is what I need to get me through this week and the next couple of weeks, then it's fine. Like, I can do that and it's okay, so long as I maintain this one. Um, so what I wanted to do yesterday but didn't because I fell asleep really hard in the daytime um, is work on filling this one back up. I have pictures to stick in. I have some blank spots that I've left deliberately blanked for photos from when I was away. Um, and then I have a page for this one too. I have a sketchbook page to trim out and put in. Um, just my most recent pages, so I'll do that. These ones, I took most of these, these two in Wales and these two in London. My grandparents are actually trying to retire this year, so I'm not sure if I'll see the shop again. Um, I wanted to take some really nice photos of my grandfather outside the shop. Um, they've had it for 50 years, they got it, or they, yeah, they got it in 1973, that's when they started working there full time. Um, and it was in the family before that, but that was when they took it on. Um, so they've been there, I mean, my whole life <laughs> at least, um, and it's just, I don't know, this is the shop where Luke and I grew up, so it's it's weird, there's a lot of feelings, I guess, a lot of weird feelings that I don't really want to tackle, but I wanted to make the effort when I was there this time around, just in case, to take a good photo of my grandfather outside the shop. Um, I took it with my camera, not my phone, so that it's big. This is a crop of like a landscape photo, and I've cropped it in to be able to get this one. Um, that way, in the future, if anyone wants to, we can get it printed, like, really big if he wants to keep it as, like, a memento or anything. Um, and I'm pretty proud of it. I think the colours came out really, really well. I'm really pleased with it, to be honest. Um, so, there we go. Um, I'm gonna cut this one out and hole punch it, I think, to put in here. I think that might be nice. That's the kind of thing I want to play with this time around. Um, I made my grid smaller. <laughs> now they're, like, 3.6, which is the same as Hobonichi or similar. I think it's the same, it looks the same. Um, last time I was using 5mm grids and they weren't accurate because I freehanded them. This time they're accurate, <laughs> so that's a good start. I think I like the way the smaller grids look in here, things look neater. Um, I managed to put a calendar across two pages, this is the calendar layout from my travellers experiment, so it's like everything is just feeding back into itself again, um, and I like it a lot. These are my winter stickers obviously. And then I'm using my old sleep tracker still. This is also from the Traveler's Notebook experiment. And I think maybe also the Philofax. I think they were similar. Um, I have a migraine gloomy in here. <laughs> if anyone was ever nervous about hole punching them, can confirm it works if you're careful. And then I just have commonplace pages, really. Um, some photos, a uh, milkshake sticker. <laughs> and then just like one of my stickers, some bits and bobs. So I want to put this one in here, I think. Um... Just for fun, innit? <laughs> just a little something to, to do while I'm a bit stressed. Um, I made this little divider out of that same paper I used to cover these books. It's very thin, but I just kind of wanted it there, I guess, as a test. I left this one blank so that if I do decide to use this book for a while, I could put an archive label here when it's finished because it's like the front of the book. Um, and I think it's fine. I don't really want to overdo it, just want it to be kind of like a nice place to play around in. Um, it'll be nice to print articles and stuff again, and, and not have to write 10 to 12 pages out by hand. Um, I guess that's one of the things I miss, is like that custom customizability, <laughs> um, and being able to add more illustration and stuff, like without printing, or like being able to print it directly onto the page anyway. Um, 
I don't know, I just kind of missed the creative way I was working when I was in these, I guess. So I thought I'd pick it back up. Do you know what? <laughs> it's no different. This is how I'm thinking of it. It's no different when people come home for the holidays and they work on like a jigsaw puzzle. That's what this is for me. This is my Christmas jigsaw puzzle <laughs> and I'm not taking questions. Um, so I'm going to cut this one out. I'll probably leave that white border around the edge just a little bit. And then I have these little ones, which I printed on the wrong paper, I just realised. But these are for my memory book, because I've got some from Wales and some from London. So that's that's what I'm doing today, finally. <laughs> um, I've not really been, my head has not really been there. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to claw it back before I get too sick. Obviously I don't sound great and I didn't sleep. I haven't eaten anything yet today and it's like midday, but... I think I'm going to lose my voice and get a bit worse, so if I can get this bit out of the way, that would be a big comfort for me. Um, just because I know that when I'm sick sick, I'm probably not going to be keeping up with it as I should. Um, so, I will say, normally what I do when I print these squares, there's only four photos on this whole page, what I'll normally do is try and gently cut around it, and then I'll feed that misshapen piece of paper back through the printer. Um, and it normally works if you're careful and you feed it through by hand, like gently it should work so that way I don't have to wait till I have a full sheet otherwise it could take weeks because I don't do a lot but I can print what I want to print when I need to print it basically without worrying about like the waste or the wait time um so just a tip there I guess because sometimes people ask um so that's the plan this afternoon is just to do those little bits I think um and then maybe eat something but I'm not really feeling very enthusiastic because my throat like you know when it's just like dry and it hurts it's that and like when i cough it makes it feel so much worse and like everything tastes weird it's just that one it's one of those ones and i just i don't want to be here <laughs> um but that's where i'm at it's the 21st it's four days till christmas um things are getting a bit weird but not too weird i just i just think i need something to focus on something to upkeep and then just vibing my way through it basically so that's where we're at
I was thinking a lot last night and this morning about how individual Filofax pages are basically just index cards um, in the way that they're loose leaf and you can reorganize them. Um, I print mine folded over because I'm bad at math <laughs> and my printer doesn't have like the auto print function. Um, so what I do is print them like on a page, like two on a page, and then I fold it in half and glue it, which gives them a nice sort of solidity as well. It makes them a bit thicker. Um, and I really like that quality of it. <laughs> That's why I haven't really tried to troubleshoot it or anything. I quite like it. Um, on that same train of thought, I, this morning I quickly whipped up some index cards, some printable index cards, just kind of for fun to add another size and shape and texture or whatever into the Filofax. Um, I thought it might be kind of nice. <laughs> I don't know what for, I just thought it might be cool. Um, I'm a big fan of index cards. I used the Foglietto ones for a long time, but because they're an import, I think they're a French company, um, they're expensive in the UK and they're really hard to find. Like, you can get them stocked here, but they're often out of stock and then it's like they never come back in stock and it's a whole thing. Um, and I'm like fussy about stuff, <laughs> so I don't really like to just buy like really cheap index cards because I feel like they're too flimsy, they don't hold up very well, often the quality of the paper is not very good and stuff. Um, so I figured like if I'm already making my own pages, why not make my own index cards, I guess. Um, so I've tried to do it again in a way that means I can fold it and it should work. Ideally, it would fold this way so that the glued side is the side that faces into the rings. Um, that way, if your glue comes undone, you can't catch it on the outside. Um, it's on the inside. It just works better that way, I find. Um, so I'm gonna cut these out in a bit and see how it looks, <laughs> just for fun. Um, what else did I want to mention that I forgot? Oh, um, I went to the bookshop the other day to try and find like a winter read, a holiday read. I don't want to read The Raven Cycle still yet because I know it will consume me and there's so many books now. When I finish The Raven Cycle, I'll have to read the ones about the Lynch brothers. I won't be able to not, <laughs> um, and I'm not ready to lose that much time. What I did find, almost completely by accident, is the new book in the Carrie Maniscalco series, the the what's the what's the series called the wicked kingdom series i really loved that trilogy when i read it it was really fun the world building was fantastic um and this one is about envy one of the other brothers someone i think one of you guys told me this book was going to come out at some point and i found it by accident i'm so excited it is quite hefty i feel like it's bigger than the other three books were um but i am so excited to read it <laughs> i'm really excited um, Envy was one of the more fun brothers in my opinion, so I'm pretty, pretty landed. Um, and then the other thing was that I got some post from an art swap I did with Kat, Kat Karras, Catherine Karras. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I'll put her out on screen. Um, we did an art swap back in like October, hence the, the pumpkin. Um, but I forgot to check my mailbox basically and I haven't uploaded since I picked it up, so... I'll include this here too. Um, I am still sick, by the way, if you think I'm sounding bad and I'm like a bit weak. <laughs> um, but we did an art swap and I'm so excited. Um, her shop is closed at the moment, I think, because she might be moving um, and I think she's not sure when she's gonna reopen it. But if you haven't, if you aren't familiar with her channel somehow and you watch mine, you'll definitely love hers. I'll put the link in the description. Um, I'm just super excited because I think it's like bookmarks and stuff and her photography is so beautiful, so like moody and like like low light. It's like, it's, it's truly like, I love it. It's very vibey. Also all of this, I might have to stop and take photos and then maybe I'll include a quiet clip because I don't want to open it. I want to, I think I want to take pictures. Um, okay, so I'll do that. I'll stop and I'll take some pictures and then I'll do like a quiet opening on the bed or something so that I can document it properly. Um, but I'm super excited about this and you should definitely check out her channel.
One of them is the Gagar album, but I think it's a compilation album. It's like their best stuff, maybe. Oh, uh, okay, cool. But they didn't have the second one, which was on your list. It's weird to hard to find. Yeah. yeah. And then the Buffy one, I think he's got music from the bronze, which is always really good. So I was like, I would kind of want okay. to see it. So I think we can share that one. Cool. Yeah. Because when I looked at the back, I was like, that sounds like the bronze music. Yeah, I never heard of that. Sort yeah. Of Isn't it? There's not that many tracks though. So your third track is garbage. Yeah. That's what made me pick it up, I think. Yeah, right, cool. Mm. Yeah. I'm curious. And Russ Russ Bertino, I know that. Yeah. I recognised a few names and I was like, I would like to see that for us. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. Christoph and Christoph Beck as well. Yeah. Cool. I've never long time. Because I have an excess of black ribbon. Yeah, fair enough. I wonder why. <laughs> I'm curious. So this is like exactly the kind of shape I was talking about. <laughs> I'm like, where do you put the shape? <laughs> Does she get it out of the... No, it's thing you know I've been <laughs> She's squeaking it inside the paper. <laughs> It's December 26th now, um, and I'm still sick, I'm still losing my voice, um, but I just wanted to stick some bits in basically to update whatever I have going on in here. Um, I've got a couple of book covers for a book I just finished and one I just started. Um, I have a couple of photos from yesterday, and then I have this photo of a tree <laughs> in Moscow I think in the 1960s. I just like the atmosphere of the photo. Um, it's, it's kind of foggy and cool, um, I just think it's pretty. I liked the way I punched that photo of my grandfather and put it in, so I'm kind of going to do the same thing with this, just to make like a little, I like how it looks. Um, 
I printed this one on that textured paper again and then I print my normal photos on normal printer paper, like the cheapest I can find. Um, I, I don't want to print everything on the Kukuyo paper because it's expensive, so it works this way. Um, I printed out my reading logs again. So if you remember, there's a little space here <laughs> designed for the picture to be like a little flap. Um, and then I can put text on this side and I can have a rating and stuff and I can write down some notes. Um, I resized this for my new grid, so I had to draw it all back out again. I kept the little detail of the months from my traveler's notebook experiments. Um, I just like it. I think it looks a bit more tidy. <laughs> so there we go. I'm gonna put these in. I don't know if I'll write the reviews out right now. Maybe. What I did this time too was just have notes on the back. This way, if I want to, I can put quotes from the book or more thoughts on the back of the page. Um, I think there's something kind of nice about that, to be able to have a page per book and then if I want to add more notes I can just slot it in um, and then the next review starts on the next page when I'm ready kind of thing. So that was my thinking. Gonna do that. Um, my commonplace pages are cute. I have some stuff about, how would you say it? Would it be a hard A like Zettel Carsten? I don't know, Zettel Carsten system um, for index cards. These are my most recent sort of journaly notes, and basically I want to make something like that for these. So that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to put some commonplace pages in here. I'm going to put this one maybe next to this or in between the two pages. And then the book notes will be behind. That's kind of my plan. Um, it's like mid-afternoon, I'm just trying to take it easy because I overdid it maybe yesterday a bit, even though we didn't do a lot. Um, and I just feel kind of run down and poorly, <laughs> so. I guess I need to do the writing first actually so that it doesn't so that it's not too difficult. Um inconvenienced by myself. Okay, I'll just put them in I have a yeah, I have a uh how do you call the envelope at the back, so I'll just pop them in there for now until I'm ready to do the writing. Um so I'll leave these to one side. And I will do these ones. I might put this one in the middle. Um, because I kind of want to use maybe this one is really pretty. And I haven't used it yet. <clears throat> And then I also have, um, I have this little one that says 25, so maybe I want to use that. And then maybe this one. I've got stickers falling out all over the place at the moment. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Maybe like that. Okay, I might put that one on there. I don't know. Just got things stuck everywhere now.
travel is though I want to try and warm the page up a bit. So Who let me think it was a good idea to make a sticker shape this awkward? How did any of you manage to stick this? <laughs> <laughs> 